this scene is not uncommon. Every one of these bargain hunters is trying to get the best of all the others. It's each woman for herself. And here, each person feels that unless he gets in the car first, he may not get in at all. Members of the crowd have a common objective, but they pursue it as individuals with no regard for each other. This is also a mob, but with the slight difference that a kind of leadership may direct it if the mob chooses to follow the leader. Here we see a difference. Again, we have a large number of men with a common objective, a common task. However, each man, instead of looking out for himself, works with his fellow worker. There is a plan in this activity. These men are working together in the fullest sense of the word. They willingly accept direction or leadership. They subordinate themselves, as we say, to the common purpose. In this way, the big jobs of civilized people are accomplished. Many men work together at a common task under direction. Whether the job consists of building a complicated machine like an automobile, or of making harmonious music, or defending our country. This willingness to work together under direction, to coordinate our individual efforts to those of our fellows, to subordinate ourselves to plan and leadership in order to effect a common purpose we call discipline. and keep the army waiting. Ah, come on now, son. Let's see you salute. You've seen me do that a hundred times. Well, come on now. Come on, do it again. Do now, it. Now, Dad, it's time for me to take Harry to the train. I miss you dreadfully, Harry. Now, Mother, I'll be home every once in a while. You're right. Every week. Mm -hmm. Now, listen, son, when, when you write to your father and mother, be sure you tell them all about yourself. But when you write to me, tell me all about the army. You know, things must have changed a lot since 1898. Sure I will. Mm -hmm. Now, now, come on. Let's see you salute. Oh, Dad, drop it. What's the use of teaching them that? They'll only have to teach them all over again. You just said the Army was different from what it was in your day. Yeah, but some things don't change. Discipline is still discipline, and courtesy is still courtesy. You, you didn't get in the Army in 17. I, I was a captain down in Cuba. And I guess if you owe Harry a handshake at the train, I at least rate a salute. You sure do, Granddad. That's fine. <laughs> Bye, Ma. <laughs> Bye, Granddad. Good advice. All right, come along, son. Good luck. Let's see you do it now. By the numbers. And salute. Two. That's better. All right. At ease. Always look at the person saluted. Remember, the salute is a greeting between men at arms. In civil life, you wouldn't raise your hat and look the other way. When you salute an officer, it's as though you were saying, I'm ready, sir. When an officer has finished talking to you or you to him, and you salute again, it means I understand. The salute should never be rendered in a slovenly or half-hearted manner. Saluting while smoking, or with one hand in the pocket, or with a coat or the overcoat unbuttoned, is in itself discourteous. And will you notice this too, men? When you salute an officer, he returns your salute. The fact that you salute first is a courtesy you show to the office as well as to the man who holds it. And courtesy is one of the first steps on the road to good discipline. It's a mark of respect given by good soldiers to good leaders. Remember that an officer holds his commission from the President of the United States and is therefore the representative of the Commander-in-Chief of the Army and Navy. There are other leaders below the rank of Lieutenant who are not commissioned by the President but are appointed from the ranks by their superior officers. They are called non-commissioned officers. They are not entitled to the salute. You men will have to learn to know the insignia of rank. Take a look at your own sleeve. It bears no chevron. That indicates that you are a private. Private Reed, step forward. Reed is a private first class. The single chevron on his arm identifies his rank. This man is a corporal, junior, non-commissioned grade. 
Note the two chevrons on his arm. Since you already know enough to call me sergeant, I don't have to go into any long explanation. But you better remember that I have three chevrons on my arm, because there are a lot more sergeants in the army. There are three higher non-commissioned grades. You address them as sergeant. The first is a staff sergeant. The staff sergeant wears one arc under his sergeant chevrons. The next higher grade is the technical sergeant. The technical sergeant wears two arcs under his sergeant chevrons. While the first sergeant is of the same grade as the technical sergeant, you'll have more to do with your first sergeant because he is the executive of your troop, company, or battery. The first sergeant wears the same insignia as that of the technical sergeant, except that there is a lozenge in the center of the chevrons. The master sergeant is the highest non-commissioned grade. The master sergeant wears three arcs under his sergeant's chevrons. Here's a real one for you to look at. I think that's all for the moment. All the men you've met today, you do not salute. I hope you learn to know the marks of non-commissioned rank as quickly as you've learned the meaning of the word dismissed. It probably came from Harry anyway. Here she is, folks. Direct from Uncle Sam. <laughs> oh, it's for me. <laughs> I haven't had a letter from him since yesterday. Well, if there's anything in here you'd you'd understand, I'll I'll read it to you. Yeah. Dear Grandpa, that saluting instruction you gave me comes in handy where I am now. I've been doing a little reading, too. Saluting isn't something that just came in with a radio. In the Middle Ages, knights in armor used to raise their hands to show they were unarmed, and then open their visors. Even the American Indians use the same gesture. So you see, the salute is a very ancient sign of greeting and respect. In our army, I can't help feeling when I salute an officer or the flag, that I'm paying respect to the things America means to me. Knowing how you feel about the Army, what happened last night will be of interest to you. The thing that worries me is getting straight on the officer's insignia of rank. I know that I should salute when I meet an officer and that I should salute first and remain at salute until the officer returns it. And I know that saluting distance is that within recognition. The point is I don't know all the insignia yet. Well, let's go to the post-movie. We may see some officers there, and I'll point out the different ranks to you before we go in. Okay. Officers wear their insignia of rank on the shoulder straps of the coat, overcoat, or olive drab shirt when worn without the coat. See those two officers going in? The one on the left is a second lieutenant. He has a single gold-colored bar. The one on the right is a first lieutenant. He has the same kind of bar, except that it's silver colored. Both first and second lieutenants are addressed as lieutenant. A captain's insignia is the same as that of a first lieutenant, except that he has two silver colored bars on each shoulder strap. Oh, there's a warrant officer. Good evening, Chaplain. Good evening, Mr. Kelly. Chaplain Mitchell has the rank of captain, but all chaplains, regardless of rank or sect, are addressed as chaplain. He's talking with Mr. Kelly, who is a warrant officer. All warrant officers are addressed as mister. I notice that the junior always walks on the left of a senior. Why is that? Well, I've heard it explained that in olden times, the sword was always carried on the left side. And the senior had so much faith in the loyalty of the junior that he trusted him on the armed side. Well, there's a major, the next in rank above a captain. He has on his shoulder an insignia in the form of a gold leaf. 
A lieutenant colonel is the next grade above major. He has the same leaf insignia, except that it's silver colored instead of gold. Oh, there's the colonel now. A colonel wears silver colored eagles on his shoulders. Is that right? Correct. By the way, both colonels and lieutenant colonels are addressed as colonel. Now, we probably won't be seeing any generals here tonight, but after the movie, I'll show you some generals' pictures in the company day room. Here are the generals' pictures I said I'd show you. This is a brigadier general. He wears one silver star. Next is a major general, and he wears two silver stars. Three silver stars means a lieutenant general who is above a major general. Incidentally, all general officers are addressed as general. Is that as high as they go? No. The highest rank is that of general. General Marshall, the chief of staff, wears four stars, as does the general of the armies. Here's a fine picture of General Pershing, who commanded our armies in the First World War. I'm still learning about military courtesy. And, among other things, I've discovered there's a lot more to saluting than just lifting your hand smartly to your cap. Outdoors and within the limits of a post, camp, or a station, salutes are exchanged between officers and enlisted men upon their meeting. That means officers of the Army, Navy, Marine Corps, and Coast Guard. It's also customary to salute officers of friendly foreign countries. You salute as soon as an officer is close enough for you to recognize him as an officer. Usually, this is when he is within 30 paces. The salute should be rendered before the officer is closer than six paces, so that he has time to recognize and return the salute. Within a military post, camp, or station, a soldier salutes an officer when he recognizes him, even when both are in civilian clothes. You salute as soon as an officer is close enough for you to recognize him as an officer. Usually, this is when he is within 30 paces. The salute should be rendered before the officer is closer than six paces so that he has time to recognize and return the salute. Within a military post, camp, or station, a soldier salutes an officer when he recognizes him, even when both are in civilian clothes. We never salute while running or at double time, but must first change to the walk or quick time before saluting. When we're outside post exchange building where we've been getting the baseball scores or buying something and an officer comes up, the first one of us who sees the officer commands attention. Then we all come to attention and salute the officer who returns the salute. Mostly the officer says, as you were, and then we return to whatever we were doing. If you're not in formation but armed and are addressed by an officer, you give the salute prescribed for the type of weapon you are armed with. If you have a pistol, you give a hand salute. If you are armed with a rifle, you give the officer a rifle salute. Unless you're a sentry walking post, in which case you salute by presenting arms. A sentinel in conversation with an officer will not interrupt the conversation to salute another officer. But, in case the officer salutes a senior, the sentinel will also salute. If we're in a moving vehicle, we execute a hand salute to an officer. But the man who is driving is not required to salute because it is necessary for him to have both hands available for the steering wheel. But when the vehicle is stopped, everybody must salute, the driver as well as the rest of us. When it is obviously inconvenient, we do not salute. While we're working or undergoing instruction, we do not stop when an officer comes up. But if we are directly addressed, 
we must come to attention to reply to the officer. The same applies when we are resting between drill periods. If the officer speaks to us, we come to attention but do not salute if we are part of a formation. When we, or officers, are engaged in sports, we do not exchange salutes. The individual in charge salutes for all enlisted men in a formation. When a unit is in formation, standing at ease and commanded by a non-commissioned officer and is approached by a commissioned officer, the unit is brought to attention and the non-commissioned officer in charge salutes in behalf of the entire unit. If it happens that a commissioned officer passes in the rear of a unit standing at ease and commanded by a non-commissioned officer, no salute is given. However, it is the custom of the service to call the unit to attention. When an organization marching at ease or at route step passes a commissioned officer, they are brought to attention. Then the non-commissioned officer in charge salutes for the entire unit. What do you think of this? Harry's got a furlough and he's coming home for this weekend. Marvelous, let me see. Yeah, right there, see? Oh! <laughs> At first I didn't know how to get my furlough, so I went to see my first sergeant. Sergeant, I would like a pass to go home from noon Saturday to Reveille Monday. Let's see. Well, you're not up for any guard duty or kitchen detail. That'll be all right. List Jones for a weekend pass. What do you want, Smith? I'd like to see the company commander, Sergeant, about applying for a furlough. Very well. I'll arrange for you to see the company commander this afternoon. Thank you, Sergeant. Come in. Sir, Private Smith has the permission of the first sergeant to speak to the company commander. All right, Smith. What do you want? I'd like to get a week's furlough, sir. A week, eh? Well, when do you want to leave? I'd like to leave this Saturday, sir. Well, I see no reason why you can't. I'll recommend your furlough to the regimental commander, and I feel sure that he will approve it. Thank you, sir. Sir, I have a message from the regimental commander. Jones, I think I'm going to get my furlough. The old man said he'd recommend it to the CO. Say that swell. Did I do that all right? Yes. It's proper for soldiers in hallways or stairways of buildings to come to attention when an officer passes. You always uncover unless you are armed like I am. Smith, your furlough has been approved to begin on Saturday. Thank you, sir. But you haven't told us yet, Harry. Do they treat you well? If they treated me any better, Mother, I'd be suspicious. Whenever I think of the Army, I always think of a group of soldiers marching along with a flag flying. The flag plays an important part. That's something else I had to learn. The national flag is flown from only one flagpole at an army post. It is raised at Reveille. At sunset, it is lowered with the retreat ceremony. When in the field, and there is no flagpole, both the silk national color, or standard of our country, and the silk color, or standard of the regiment, with battle streamers on it, are placed outside of the commanding officer's tent, or headquarters, at Reveille. The national flag is on the left as you face the two. A soldier, whether in uniform or civilian clothes, when passing the colors, begins his salute six paces from them and terminates it six paces beyond. When in a military formation, the commander salutes for all.
The national flag and regimental colors are carefully put in their cases at retreat. Should the national color or standard be cased in its waterproof cover at any time because of inclement weather, it is not saluted. You know, your flag's all right, but how about the national anthem? You can't stick me on that either, Grandpa. Whenever the national anthem is played without a display of colors, all dismounted officers and men not in formation will stand at attention, face the music, and salute. Vehicles in motion will be brought to a halt. Persons riding in a passenger car or on a motorcycle will dismount and salute. Those riding in other types of military vehicles will remain in the vehicle at attention, the person in charge of the vehicle uh, dismounting and rendering the hand salute, except that tank commanders salute from the vehicle. Individuals leading animals or standing to horse will stand at attention but will not salute. Those mounted on animals will halt and render the salute mounted. The salute and position at attention are held until the last notes of the music have died away. When played upon an official occasion, the national anthem of any foreign nation is accorded the same marks of respect. Well, uh, what do you do when the bugle sounds to the colors? I do what everybody does. At the first note, which is played by field music, we all face the colors, stand at attention, and salute. We hold that salute until the last bugle note has been played. But you know what I'd like to see again? What? Retreat. You know, there is the most beautiful ceremony in the army. 